name is Casey. Do you want some apples and honey? I, I'll take the apple, but why the honey? You've never had apples and honey, Morgan? No. This is my favorite Rosh Hashanah snack ever. Really? Yeah, this is one of the traditions that we do in our home and a lot of Jewish people do in their home to welcome in the new year. Well, I've heard a lot about Rosh Hashanah and I know Mr. Bob and Rabbi have been busy um, preparing for it. Yeah, yeah, you can tell that they're a little stressed out this time of year and a lot of other adults are too getting ready to celebrate the new year. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. It lands on a different day every year for our calendars, but on the Hebrew calendar, it lands on the first day of the month Tishrei. Yeah. So what do you do on Rosh Hashanah? Well, we do a lot of things. Every family does different things, but traditionally we eat apples and honey like we have here. We pray a lot. We come to synagogue to pray or we pray at home. We hear the shofar blow. That's our favorite one. What's a what's a, a, a shofar? Shofar, shofar. Yeah. yeah, a shofar. A shofar is a huge ram's horn that the ancient Israelites blew to awaken the Jewish people and to alert them that it's a new year. Isn't that what my alarm clock is for? Yeah, it is, but you can't snooze a shofar, and the ancient Israelites didn't actually have alarm clocks, so they used the shofar that seemed to be the best technique to make sure all the Jewish people knew that it was time to celebrate. Wow. Wow. So why don't we just call it the New Year then? We do, but we do it in Hebrew. So the word Rosh in Hebrew means head or top, and the word Shana means year. So when you add those together, you get New Year or head of the year. So one thing that we do for the New Year, Morgan, is we reflect on all the things that we had done, all of our victories, and maybe some of our bad days too. So did you have any victories this year? Yeah, so this year I made the Dean's List of my school. That's I, amazing. Yeah, I made Valentine's Day cards for children in the hospital and I helped my mom clean out the pantry in my house because it was really that messy. That is so helpful. I'm sure she really appreciated you taking the time to do that. Yeah. yeah. What did you do this year? I had some good times too. I tried my best to collect tzedakah to give money to people who needed it more than I did. I did a lot of trash pickups at, in my neighborhood and in my community. And I also helped in the kitchen and in the house. I helped Mr. Samson clean up after dinner. So Morgan, did you have a completely good year, like 365 days of just good stuff? Or did maybe some things go wrong too? Of course, nobody's perfect. We all have our bad days, but we can try and make ourselves the best person that we can. And since we're all human, we all make mistakes. That is so true, Morgan. That is so true. But I'm actually, I still am confused over what Rosh Hashanah means. And uh, do you have anything that I can learn more about, about Rosh Hashanah? Yeah, I just learned about this really cool TV show that teaches you some things about Rosh Hashanah. Are you interested in watching it with me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Absolutely. CKA Dump. This is where you throw away your bad days and recycle your good days. If you want to make a deposit in one of our new recycling facilities, please follow the following categories. Good deeds for yourself go in bin A. Good deeds for the people that you love, like your friends and family, go in bin B. And good deeds that you do for your community and strangers go into bin C. If you find that you have more to throw away than to recycle, that's okay. That's what we're here for. So, Morgan, um, we're kind of learning that people do Rosh Hashanah very differently. Do you have any interesting family traditions maybe that you guys do at home or at school or out in the community? So with my Hillel family, we always have a apples and honey bake-off.
That is so cool. And so we always bake a dish with apples and honey in it. And then we judge to see which is the prettiest, which is the most creative and which is the tastiest. And I love that. It's like the great Jewish bake off <laughs> instead of the Brit great British bake off. Yeah, that's too cool. Let's see what other families are doing on Rosh Hashanah. Apple chicken and then the apple chicken and uh, and and we the apples and honey and try to guess what else. What else? I can't even guess. Oh well, I don't think Reagan's gonna guess it. What shape is our color? A circle. And do you know what we put in it? Raisins. We put raisins in. And what's all that for? What's the name of the holiday? Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. Good job, Rim. Rosh Hashanah, our family tradition is to dip apples and honey. Then there's a sprinkle. How good is it? Miss Casey and I try a new fruit every year for Rosh Hashanah. I went to the supermarket and found this weird melon. They didn't know how it got there. They gave it to me and paid me to take it out of their store. Very concerning. It's got spikes on it and weird green boogers inside. Have a Rosh Hashanah. In our family, our Rosh Hashanah tradition is to all come together for services and then after lunch to go eat lunch at an Italian restaurant. Since we're in quarantine this year, we'll be ordering in some Italian. And also the morning of Rosh Hashanah, we love to have challah and honey for breakfast. Another one of our traditions is to is make apple pie. Oh my God! Pick it up and keep hitting it, Reed. Oh! And try to eat Tilly, what do you say? It is so much fun to learn how this holiday is celebrated by all different types of people. Welcome to CKA Farms. We are ready to provide all of your Rosh Hashanah needs with apples. We have red apples, we have green apples, we have big apples, we have small apples, and any other apple that you could think of. We also have pineapples, we have crab apples, we have the big apple, we have applesauce, apple pies, apple... Those are in season. Oh. We have pineapples in theory, we have crab apples in theory, we have the big apple in theory, we have Apple Jacks, in theory. We have apple sauce, in theory. And we have apple juice, in theory. We even have our own bees to collect honey that you need for your Rosh Hashanah apples to dip in. Do you know why we use a shofar instead of a different instrument? A long time ago, the Israelites were trying to figure out how to properly introduce the new year. They used a lot of different instruments. That's the spirit, but I think it deserves some music and not just sounds. That's a little bit better, but the guitar isn't loud enough, so like people couldn't hear it across the mountain. Well, that is some great music, Casey, but, and it can be loud enough, but we need something that is, can only be used for music. We can't, the phone can be used for a whole bunch of different stuff, Casey. Try another instrument. Wow, 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 wow. That's really loud, Casey, and that was that was really good music. But we need an instrument that isn't man-made and the trumpet is a man-made instrument. We need something that's made from nature. Why don't we try the shofar? <laughs>
Shema Yisrael Adonai. Hey, Casey. Hi, Morgan. How are you? I'm good. That is one of my favorite songs. Is it on iTunes? You know what? I really don't think so, but it's called the Shema. It's something that we sing every single day. Every single day? Every single day. Why do we say it every single day? We say the song every single day to remind us to listen. Morgan. Hey, Morgan. Hey, to remind us to listen and hear. The first words are, hear, O Israel. We want to listen to ourselves. We want to listen to those around us. Morgan. And we want to be listening to God, and we want God to be listening to us. So I heard everything you just said, but what's the difference between listening and hearing? That's a really good question. There's a big difference. When we hear, what we're doing is allowing sound to just go through our ears like it normally does. But when we're listening, we're understanding and we're focusing and we're paying attention. So what are we listening to? Well, when we say the Shema, like I said, we're listening to ourselves. We're not all, everything about ourselves. We're not listening to see if we're hungry. We're not listening to see if we have to go to the potty, but we're listening to ourselves to see what we need and what we need to be doing. We're listening to the needs of those around us. And most importantly, we're listening to God. So Morgan, would you like to try to say the Shema with me? Sure. So what we do when we say the Shema is we get really focused and we close our eyes or we cover our faces. You can use your hand or like I use my book and we focus in as hard as we can while we say it. Okay, ready? Yeah. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Machuto So Morgan, now that we're really listening, is there a song that you can teach me? Yeah, so this is one of my favorite Rosh Hashanah songs. It's called L'Shana Tova Tika Tevu, and it has some Hebrew, but in Hebrew can be a little bit challenging, but I know you can do it. Okay. Okay, so the Hebrew, there are three Hebrew words in this song. L'Shana. L'Shana. Tova. Tova. Tika Tevu. Tika Tevu. Perfect, awesome. that was good. And so, Lashana Tova Tika Tebu means may you have a happy new year. Okay. May you have a happy year. Okay. A new year, a year of peace, a sweet new year. Okay. And so they're all basically the same thing, but we want to um, emphasize, we want to make sure that we know that Lashana Tova Tika Tebu, may you have a happy year. And so it's a greeting that we say to everybody on Rosh Hashanah. Okay, that makes sense. Can you show me what it sounds like? Sure. So I'm going to sing it through once and then we can sing it together. Perfect. Okay. is about doing good for ourselves, our family, our community, and to God, celebrating the new year, 
and for apologizing for the things that we have done with the understanding that we're not perfect and that we can always do better. That's exactly it, Morgan. You got it. If I'm really listening, I can hear how hungry all this learning has made me. Well, it's a really good thing that I brought snacks today, huh? It's very good. <laughs> so, Morgan, there's one song that I really, really love from when I was little. Would you like to learn how to sing it? Yes, of course. All right, Morgan, so this is how it goes. Repeat okay. after me. Repeat after me. You are the best. You are the best. <laughs> Dip the apples. Dip the apples in the honey, in the honey. Make a bracha loud and clear. Say a bracha loud and clear. Lashana tova, Lashana tova. Umetuka, Umetuka. May you have a sweet new year. May you have a sweet new year. That's right. Let's do it together. Yes. Ready? Dip the apples in the honey. Say a bracha loud and clear. Lashana tova umetuka. May you have a sweet new year. that it was time to celebrate wow wow uh so why don't we, we just pause there and then wow 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 we, no. we got pretty far <laughs> pause one more time we even have our own bees oh yeah sorry can you cut that out okay <laughs> thank you all right monotone no smile Sorry, I can't. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Very cool. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pause. We're almost done. <laughs> Why don't we try the shofar? <laughs> of course, nobody's perfect, but nobody's nerfect difference between listening and hearing because I just heard everything you said. Okay. Miss Casey is uh is a singer is heart. a man <laughs> and can't sing as high as the other ladies. Uh. <laughs> Alright, when are we all ready? Do a lot of the time for English. Why don't we try the shofar? <laughs> Welcome to the sea kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made it past welcome to. Mm-hmm.